All right, let's take a quick look at this battery adapter. This particular one is supposed to be set up for the rigid brand of tools. They probably can't use that name on the box, I'm guessing. Uh, stickers kind of covering that up there, but that's the brand that this particular, you see lots of these different adapters around. That's what that one's made for. It's supposed to be 12 gauge cables fused and switched. Here's a couple of spare fuses. They are 30 amp. That's pretty generous. I don't know if I'm going to use 30 amp fuses in this. It depends on what you're going for. Some mounting screws. You could mount this like as a plate to something else. And these are kind of neat. These are uh, connectors or you stick the wire in and just press these tabs down to connect the wire to something else. So they're not maybe the best for a permanent install of something, but for something quick and dirty, these little things are great. And here is the unit itself. Some nice orange plastic. These wires feel heavy, uh, moderately stiff. Let me see if they're actually labeled. Uh, the gauge, I see some of the some of the other specs there, but not actual gauge. Not that I can make out so far anyways. 300 volt. Oh, there it is right there. I don't know if the camera will bring it into focus. Probably not. So I can see 12 AWG right here on the wire. It's a heavy copper, thick stranded. So probably actually good wires if you are going to be pulling any kind of real amperage out of here. I think there will be a fuse in there already. Yep, so three fuses total. All 30 amp. And should have probably stripped the wires on this. You have a switch on and off. I have here a fully charged 4 amp hour battery from Rigid. So we can try that out and do a quick test here with our multimeter. We're not going to hook this up to anything at the moment. Just double check. 20 volts DC mode. It's about what we want. We'll need these. You definitely want to be careful with stuff like this. On the one hand, these tool batteries that we have have a tremendous amount of energy stored in them that we would love to use for things beyond just in our tools but you can definitely cause damage to your batteries if you use these irresponsibly so you want to be pretty careful with uh, what you use these for how you use them never letting them short out and that sort of thing but it's great that they include a fuse and a switch uh, as part of helping you use your battery in a in a safe manner with this. So that clips right on there and it seems to fit well. It looks like it belongs on the battery. Of course you could have your mounting holes coming off through there if you needed this attached to some kind of an adapter of some sort. And I really should grab the wire strippers if you can bear with me for a moment. best pair in the house, but you would find your 12 gauge spot. Just take that insulation off the end there. And do the same with this one. Quickly. Okay, maybe I want the alligator ends after all. It's just easier when you're trying to do multiple things at once. So, of course, we'll do a black to black. That does look like nice 12 gauge wire there. And we don't read any current off the bat, which is good because the switch is off, so that would be kind of a problem. Turn the switch on. We've gone slightly over. This is a fully charged battery, so let me go to the next setting. And it shows 20 volts, which is about the fully charged resting voltage of this 
kind of a battery pack. They say 18, but they charge up a little higher in that, and then it drops down a little bit as the battery gets used up. So if you're uh, trying to adapt uh, power wheels to run off a nice lightweight rechargeable battery that you already have, or if you're trying to adapt to a different uh, tool perhaps or something, you want to be careful. Uh, you still want to use your original charger when you are recharging your batteries. Don't try to backfeed and charge the battery through here. There should be, I'm glad they put a switch, I'm glad they put a diode. Uh, I think they probably should have, or I'm, I'm glad they put a switch and a fuse. Uh, if it were up to me, I would say there should be a diode in there, and I don't know if there is a diode that would prevent voltage from flowing back into your battery. We can test that as well. around negative 19.9 volts there's probably no diode present within the unit so that's okay still a couple of safety things that are already included for you there seems like sturdy plastic easy to mount easy to work with thick wires that can carry a good amount of power just use it responsibly and you should be good to go